Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome back to your nicely entertainment program, where you can but once a night relax your weary feet after your long and tiresome day. We need no escape, though, for we are already living in it, but there are those that wish to go further, those that intend to seek out a greater purpose by venturing out into the watery blue skyline, and very few return. But suppose they are existing. Perhaps those men and women that sail out into the never-ending sea truly do survive through their alternative ways of living. Have they contacted any foreigners? What truly lies beyond our street's handrails? And who, if anyone, could shed some light on this subject? Well, tonight, those questions will be answered. So, settle down, all you young and old. Tune your radios for the clearest signal you can squeeze out of your allotted electricity level and tuck into your seaweed salads. For tonight, we speak of planers, here on the Grand Azavin Radio Broadcast. My name is Max Becker, and you've tuned in on quite the exciting show tonight. For this evening, I have a wondrous tale to spin for you. It may sound unbelievable, but I have actually spoken with a planer. That's right, I, your faithful voice in the box, have conversed with one of the most mysterious people types in this altered world. Planers are most curious, but we'll talk plenty about them later. For now, let's get on to the day's news. Today's headlines are short, but certainly sweet to the ears. Master Timothy Garter has invented a new spinning top which never ceases to spin. He calls it the Endless Spinner, but it's a little on the bulky side. He couldn't get it out of the front door, so people have to clamber over one another as they take a seat in his living room and watch the ten-foot-high toy spin endlessly with its steam-based stabilization system keeping it up when it's about to fall down. His parents refuse to comment. In other news, Grand Palace Official Number 18 proposed to Official Number 20 the other day, and the two will be married on the weekend. A massive congratulations to the both of you. I hope I can find such a meaningful relationship when I reach 88. And as for the boys footling about on the eastern pier today, well, Violet West opened up the gates and got them off safely. I dashed down to see if they would give a statement, but they were too busy being carried off by their mothers by the ear. Violet and the citizens watching were amused by this, which almost made it worth the trouble. I'm sure they'll be listening tonight, so boys, we're glad you're safe, but please don't ever go on there again. You know how unstable it can be. That's all for the daily news, so let's move along to a prediction of the weather before we get on to our first advertisement break. According to the ADVs, sunny and clear skies are expected for the remainder of the week. Apart from Wednesday, though. Wednesdays are always the worst days. However, it seems even on Wednesday there will be only minor pitter-patters of water, so get outside and enjoy the beautiful skies. If our teachers are listening tonight, this week is sure to be perfect for outdoor activities and expansive learning opportunities all around the city. Now, a minor advertisement break, and uh, then my experience with a planer. Stay tuned, because you don't have any other choices.
Waiter. Waiter! Phil, did you ever see this poor service? I'm going to call the manager. Take it easy, Walt. What's mostly wrong is your grouch. I'm sorry, Phil, but my digestion is so upset. What you may need for your poor digestion is something that works after nature's own order. Try Carter's Little Liver Pill. Good advice. When your digestion is upset and you feel headachy and irritable, take Carter's Little Liver Pill. You see, each day, nature normally produces about two pints of a vital digestive juice to help digest your food. If nature fails, your food may remain undigested, leaving you headachy and irritable. To feel cheerful and happy again, take Carter's Little Liver Pill. They increase the flow of this vital digestive juice quickly, often in as little as 30 minutes. And you're on the road to feeling better. Don't depend on artificial aids to counteract indigestion when Carter's Little Liver Pills aid digestion after nature's own order. Take Carter's Little Liver Pills as directed. Is the sweetheart you married the husband you expected him to be? Has the war created new problems for you in your marriage? To answer these and other personal problems brought in by your friends and neighbors, Arid presents John J. Anthony, founder of the famed Marital Relations Institute, in a brand new program of daily sessions of kindly and helpful advice. It's time to discuss, listeners. Discussion is the root of all positive progression, the key to unlocking a door of possible outcomes and enlightenment on shaded details. I assure you, if I weren't speaking here once every night, most of us would fail to realize just how lucky we are to be living here, above and not lying beneath the waves. But <laughs> I'm getting too wordy again, aren't I? Let's just get going with planers. Now, most of us know what they are, but we don't know who they are. Years ago, when I was growing up and playing at the harbour with my friends, we would tie a rope to the city's underframe and swing out on it over the water. When we were done, we'd sit and watch as the Deepers emerged from the water, returning from the old world below and bringing with them the strangest of objects. But on some days we'd look out at the horizon and see a planer coming in. They were always different, but their boats weren't always grey and brown coloured, seemingly held together by tattered ropes lined with trinkets they had gathered on their travels or traded for at another city. They would come in, get clearance to enter by the harbour master, and do whatever they needed to do. After, they would get back on their boat and sail away once more into the unknown. The old law used to be whenever a planer would come in, the city was required to trade or even supply them with something they desperately needed. That is still the law, but there have been a few more conditions added recently. Hence why today was so incredibly special. Planers slowed down on coming here a while ago. Perhaps it's because of our new conditions on the rule. But today, after almost a year of no planers visiting us at all, I got the chance to speak with one. He pedalled, slowly but confidently, into the dock on one of the roughest looking boats I had ever seen. A square-shaped, scrap metal shack sat in the middle of the wooden boat, with him sitting at the back, pedalling forward. Bottles hanging by strings attached to the main hut jingled and jangled as the sea gently rocked his vessel back and forth. The harbour master called out. Stop and state your intention. He replied with, a supplies trade. He then got off the seat on which he sat to pedal the boat and grabbed a green tinted jar from inside a chest that was on the deck. I sat there on the rocky harbour, speaking with the lifeboat captain about a story I wish to bring you tonight as our legs hung over the edge over the water. But we stopped to watch the exchange between the planer and harbourmaster. It was a special event in some ways. We weren't expecting much to come out of that little chest when he reached into it. 
the captain even nudged my arm jokingly with his elbow, and casually dismissed the possibility of anything valuable being in there. That changed when the planer held up the jar. The harbour master stood looking down at him from the watchtower, and clearly saw what he had. A jar full of old world sweet wrappers. The captain and I leaned forward, almost falling into the water below the rocks we sat on. I got quickly to my feet and ran for the docking area. As expected, the harbour master let him dock, and the planer waited after telling them what he needed. The planer hopped off his boat and sat down to adjust one of his mechanically tightened boots. I sat down next to him, and he was quiet at first. Not great with English. He was barely wearing anything, just a seaweed and fishnet shirt and trousers held together with some rusty safety pins and knots. As I got a closer look at his boat, I saw most of it was covered with seaweed and bent loose nails. He spoke very little, but what I got from him is that he was happy with his life. He chose to live this way instead of what we all think here about planers being banished to a life of endless sailing by other cities. He couldn't tell me where he'd come from, which was perhaps the most difficult thing to let go of. I ask my connections in the Grand Palace frequently about if we've received anything in the wireless room, but to this day, we never have. We know there are more cities in this world, but it's just difficult to contact them. But that's a discussion for another programme. My minimal talk with the planer was interrupted by a harbour worker who brought down a crate of food in exchange for two of the five wrappers. I do hope the planer finds his next stop soon, and maybe even returns so I may speak with him again. As for the wrappers, well, they definitely got the attention you'd expect, as the harbour worker was surrounded and followed by a group of curious young Azavinians who were playing nearby. Certainly many of us adults would have done the same. Well, there ends my experience with a planer, a curious man who has now swiftly sailed back out into the watery plain. With an origin and history, we will never know. But let's not dwell on this too much. It's time for the next advertisement break. Hear about these incredible new products from local Azavinian inventors while I prepare our final segment for the show tonight. Ajax makes even the dirtiest pan shine like new in a gym. So you say Jack! And we're back. Back with our final segment of the show. Listeners, as I mentioned earlier on, discussion is so incredibly important so I would like to hear more of what you have to say. We here in Azavin know that each of us is equal to the other. So what harm is there in doing a little talking amongst friends? What I'm saying is that I would like you to get more involved in these shows. I want to hear what you have to say about our grand city. So, I'm going to start something new on this broadcast. A public discussion segment. 
That's right, each night we'll have a new topic that I ask at the end of every program, and you are open to respond. All you need to do is send in a phonograph cylinder with your response on it to me here at the station. Then I'll play your response on the system I have here, and we can all hear your point of view. It's genius, I know! Quite revolutionary. I dare say this may even spark a new era in radio broadcasting, one where the listener can audibly communicate through recorded messages to the presenter in order to create a new dimension to the discussion of various topics of great importance and interest to the mass populace. Ooh, how thrilling! Well, without further ado, here's my question for you. Since two boys got onto the Eastern Pier today, do you think it's time to finally demolish it? I mean, it's becoming more of an eyesore nowadays, and the Safety Council do think it's impossible to save. So, let's discuss this. In your response, tell me what you think about the abandoned East Pier. Should we save it and let fishermen fish there once more? Or should we take what we can from it and let the rest fall into the sea? Make your judgment and send in your answers. I look forward to hearing from you, citizens. Anyway, that's all we've got time for tonight, listeners. So I thank you for tuning in. And I will speak to you once again tomorrow night on this, the one and only Grand Azavin Radio Broadcast.